Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is the monthly wrap up for January of 2024. So, in this monthly wrap up, I am going to very briefly summarize the books that I read in January of 2024. All of these books I have spoken of more in depth in previous videos, uh, most of which I call the uh, Fresh Red Kills videos, where I talk about books that I've recently finished reading that give my thoughts. So this is just going to be a very quick summary overall of the things that I read. Um, so I'm going to start with, I guess, this one here, uh, The Babylonians, An Introduction. Uh, by Gwendolyn Leek, hopefully I'm saying that right. This is just what it says. It is an introduction to the Babylonian civilization, around 150 pages. Um, it begins with kind of a, a rapid fire history lesson of about 2,000 years of history. Uh, then it goes more into their society, their economy, and then ultimately more into their uh, material culture and things like death rituals and, and uh, magical belief and things like that. Um, when I read it, uh, it was certainly like, you know, the, the first half was not quite as compelling. And then right when I really got into it, it ended. But if I'd only read this, I think I would have had, you know, just more of a mid middling appearance, uh, middling opinion, <laughs> if I can speak of it. But after I read this, I then read, I'm going to go through my pile here. Um... Irving Finkel's uh, The First Ghost, Most Ancient of Legacies, uh, where he looks at mostly the cuneiform texts. Um, Irving Finkel is an expert in uh, in that language, in reading cuneiform. He um, is a very kind of a fun, eccentric intellectual who works at the British Museum. And uh, this, it, what he's looking at in here is the earliest belief in ghosts. Uh, what did the ancient... Babylonians uh, or Sumerians, uh, what did they think about um, ghost belief? Uh, what did they think about the afterlife? What sort of rituals do they have to get rid of ghosts um, or things like necromancy? Um, this was ended up being very, very fascinating, um, especially the first half. The first half was really um, more about the immediacy of ghost belief. And in the second half, he looks at cuneiform tablets that deal with the afterlife to try and piece out what do they actually think about what happened after they died. Um, but overall, this was a lot of fun. And what I found was this ended up being a really good, uh, a really good source for background information to read this. Um, it gave me context for certain things that Ernie Finkel kind of mentions briefly, but that because I read this, I felt like I had a more fuller, more full understanding of it. So I would say like my opinion of this kind of went up once I read this. So um, I would recommend both these together. You see, I also read as, because I read those two to look more into the ancient Near East for Storathon 2024. Um, and I had also read this graphic novel. Um, this is the, actually volume two of a graphic novel adaptation of Sapiens, um, which seems to be a very divisive type of book. And this was one that I just ultimately wish I liked a lot more. Um, I was kind of disappointed in this. Uh, there were some interesting ideas. I didn't necessarily like the presentation of some of those ideas. Uh, there was some history that I uh, was, especially American history, I didn't think was um, characterized all too well uh, as far as accuracy. And uh, seemed like a lot of pet theories in here as well. Um, and not not well backed up enough to my satisfaction. So this is not one that I can necessarily recommend. I wish it worked. I really did. Um, I did read two works of fiction. So first I read The Great God Pan and Other Horror Stories by Arthur Macon, um, the Welsh writer. And this was a pretty fun collection. I did like this overall. Um, it didn't it didn't blow me away. Uh, and whenever I read things like this, this is most of these stories were from the 1890s, although some were from the early 20th century. Uh, I do read them within context of the period in mind. So I am thinking about late 19th century literature, and I'm often reading these also as primary sources to try and figure out what was going on in that time period. So um, they're never just stories to me. They're also historical documents, essentially, that I can use as a window into the past. That's just because I'm very historically minded. Um, but I'm a, a huge horror fan, and I should specify horror movie fan. I'm trying to read more horror fiction, so, but I don't 
I don't get a lot of fiction in, in my reading. Uh, I try, I'm trying to get at least one or two books of fiction in every month, and I've been doing okay with that. Um, so The Great God Pan was a huge influence on people like H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. Um, I do like Macon's, uh, his, his approach to horror. Um, it's kind of like, like looking through the veil of reality to another realm, or um, seeing the sort of layers of the past, the paganism, and uh, and having that history kind of come back in ways that are, are horrifying. And I really like that quite a bit. Um, and there's a lot of stories in here that work really well, like The Great God Pan or The White People. Um, there were some really good ones. There's also some that weren't as great. I know that The Bowman was very famous, and especially in World War II, um, it was, I guess, inspirational for the British. Uh, sorry, World War One. Um <laughs> But I just didn't think it held up that all that well as a as a story. So yeah, there, there's some in here that are are kind of middling. Um, but when it hits, it hits pretty good. Uh, so if you are somebody who likes, especially the kind of loquacious writing of late 19th century, I think that you uh, it's worth giving it a giving it a try. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. But if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check it out. I also read Lord of the Flies. Um, this is a reread, so by William Golding. So originally published in the early 1950s. I had read this in high school, but I didn't remember it very, very well. There were definitely some things that I misremembered. And part of my, I guess my enjoyment of rereading it was going through my own memories and figuring out uh, what was a false memory, what was a real one. Um, you know, you, you get insight into maybe how your brain works um, when you do things like that. Uh, so, of course, this is the famous story of, you know, a bunch of British schoolboys who end up on a South Pacific island, deserted island, and they have to try and survive, and things go terribly wrong with them. They basically resort to violence and warfare, and it's a very negative view of human nature, and it's not one that I entirely agree with. I don't think that people necessarily are prone to act like that in small groups. I think we're actually very... Uh, we're we've evolved to cooperate. Um, but I do think that this is a very effective uh, allegory for, I guess, our species. Uh, if we're looking at nations instead of small groups, I do think we tend to act like this quite a bit. So uh, yeah, I'm glad I reread it. Not bad at all. And the last two that I read for the month of January, I have got Hannibal, uh, Rome's Greatest Enemy, a biography by Philip Freeman. Uh, a really fun, swift read about one of the most fascinating historical figures, in my opinion. Um, I just think his story, you, you can't, you know, it's one of those situations where uh, the truth is definitely uh, more fascinating than, than fiction. Um, just an absolutely amazing story. My one criticism with this book was that there were no maps, uh, <laughs> no maps or images. There really should have been for this, but otherwise I think it's a really good introduction to Hannibal and also a or largely sympathetic look at him. And the last thing that I read was Yellow Star. Um, this is a book in verse. So this is written by Jennifer Roy, but it's about the childhood experience of being inside a Jewish ghetto uh, that her aunt had. So it's taken from her aunt's perspective, written in the first person and written in verse. Um, she was five years old when she was put in the ghetto. She was 10 years old when she uh, survived and was able to leave it. And it's about the terrible things, of course, that her family went through and how she ultimately survived. And I think that writing it in verse actually added a really interesting immediacy to the whole thing. Um, I liked, I liked the, uh, the experience of reading this, uh, this in verse. Um, and I would recommend this. This was, written, or this was um, excuse me, written for a middle school crowd. So ages six through eight, something I'm going to be reading with some students for a history book club in February. And... I'm really glad that I picked it, and uh, <laughs> I hope that they enjoy it, too. So that is it. Those are the books that I read in January of 2024. I'm going to try and hold up my pile here. Um, of course, if you have read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts. And here it is. And as always, thank you, BookTube.